You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Monday, July 29th, 2019. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us. Detectives this evening renewing their public appeal for information over the murder of Jacoby Smith, who was viciously killed in July 2017. Mr. Smith, just 21 at the time, was fatally stabbed at around 7.15 p.m. at the West End Sailboat Club in Sands during a brawl. He had been there to attend a wake in honor of another murder victim, Jakari Francis. Despite being given first aid by first responders, Mr. Smith later died in the hospital. Witnesses to the incident or anyone with information, no matter how insignificant it may seem are urged to call police on 247-1739 of course a confidential and anonymous crime stoppers hotline on 800-8477 elsewhere police are calling on four witnesses to the fatal road traffic crash that claimed the life of 19 year old Talunde grant the single vehicle crash took place at around 155 saturday morning on malabar road in sands near cochran road with mr grant believed to be headed west at the time witnesses should contact the police at 295-0011 as soon as possible. And in yet another matter, investigators again pleading for information surrounding the Court Street shooting murder of Taylor Greer on July 27th of last year. Mr. Greer had been standing on Court Street when two men on a motorcycle wearing dark colored clothing and full face helmets approached a group of men and opened fire before fleeing north on Court Street and then east onto Angle Street. You should also call the police on 247-1739 or Crom Crumstock if you have any information. In other news, the Pembroke Southeast MP Rolf Kamisiong has renewed his call for the name of English Admiral Sir George Summers to be struck from the second day of Cup match. Currently, the first day of the two-day classic is called Emancipation Day to mark the day in 1834 when blacks were set free from slavery. However, the second day continues to be in honor of Sir George, who is credited for accidentally colonizing Bermuda after a shipwreck in 1609. Mr. Kamisiong, who first call for the name change says evidence that Sir George was involved with slavery should disqualify his recognition. Mr. Kamis Young stressing he was speaking strictly in his personal capacity. No, I think it's important. I, first of all, I want to give credit to my colleague, Chris Famous, who has been out there in the wilderness almost for the last seven, eight, nine months, um, saying that this was necessary because Sir George Summers, uh, subsequently, we've, we've, you know, growing research is now uh, conveyed that um, Sir George Summers was a, a, a slave owner and slave trader operating in this Atlantic region, uh, usually attacking Spanish ships, maybe the occasional Portuguese ship, uh, looking for uh, things of value. And some of those things of value, based upon the, uh, the period, were uh, enslaved persons, which he then would sell off. And so for us, it's, it's, you know, it's just untoward, at the very least, for uh, someone who was involved in the slave trade, no matter what level, to be associated with an event that had its rationale, the celebration of emancipation, the celebration of freedom, if you will, that looked back at that time when persons of African descent, and in Bermuda's case, persons of Native American descent, uh, were enslaved. Instead of Sir George, Mr. Kamis Young feels that former slave and civil rights activist Mary Prince should be permanently honored for the second day of Cup Match. Yeah, on that second day, I really think we would do well to consider that. A momentum is growing both around the idea of um, severing Sir George Summers' association with the Cup Match holiday and latterly considering pushing, or not pushing, but latterly considering making Mary Prince the person we honor on the second day. Uh, I came up with that idea about eight months ago, after Mr. Famous, MP Famous, had uh, talked about uh, moving Sir George Summers out of that, uh, that hallowed ground. Uh, I then thought that it would be great to have Mary Prince in there, because at the time, going back six, seven, eight months ago, there was growing interest around renewed research around Mary Prince. People need to understand very quickly that uh, Mary Prince was one of the seminal figures uh, that made a major contribution uh, to the subsequent ab abolition of persons of African descent as slaves within the British Empire. However, not everyone is in support of such a change. One identified 
unidentified man telephoned our newsroom this evening to challenge the idea that Sir George Summers owned slaves. The caller told our newsroom that Sir George was a slave trader and not a slave owner before hanging up. It is hoped that government will change the name of the second day of the holiday by next year. Well, coming up, we talk cup match and we have all the latest weather news. Stay with us. I got these for seasickness last week, and they're terrible. That's strange. I know. I put one behind each ear like you're supposed to, and nothing happened. These are tablets. You're meant to take them with water. I got this pump for my asthma. Hasn't changed anything. Show me how you're using it. It's an inhaler. You're meant to breathe it in. Well, this toothpaste? Definitely off. It's a hemorrhoid cream. That explains why my gums are shrinking. Gage Miners is accustomed to representing his country overseas. He ran for Bermuda at both junior and senior levels at the CAC Games, the NACAC, the Island Games, and the World University Games. Gage is the Bermuda National Record Holder for indoor 800 meters and 1,000 meters, and has won Bermuda National Championships in 800 meters, 1,500 meters, and cross country. He has brains as well as brawn, earning bachelor's and master's degrees from Franklin Pierce University. Gage is a six-time NCAA All-American and a two-time Carifta Games medalist. On home soil, he was crowned Front Street Mile Champion in 2018. Definitely one to watch at the Pan Am Games in Peru. I was the poster child of health. I exercised, I ate fruits and vegetables, and went to bed early. I was convinced that I was throwing away my money paying health insurance every month. Then I had a bike accident and things changed. Thankfully, everything was covered by my insurance. I was one of the lucky ones. Some of my boys don't even have insurance. Imagine a Bermuda where every person has access to the care they need when they need it most. A message from the Ministry of Health. Welcome back. Well, as you go about your celebrations during this week's two-day cup match holiday, authorities want you to know that they will be working overtime to ensure everyone at the cricket club and out on the water is safe. Jasmine Patterson reports that authorities will also be monitoring the quality of the seawater as a precaution. All systems are go. A news conference was held to inform the public on what to expect from a safety perspective to ensure a smooth, safe, and enjoyable event for all. We will have a robust security presence here at St. George's Cricket Club, uh, led by SAS Protection Services. Um, they will be having checks at the gate, electronic checking, as well as checking bags. Any prohibited weapons will be confiscated immediately, um, which, which will include knives in reference to individuals who wish to cut their food um, at the game. Bottles will also be prohibited at the grounds. Any pre-made beverages must be brought in a plastic container. The Bermuda Police Service are taking a different approach to covering this year's event. This is the first year that we will have a joint agency command center actually located in the St. George's Cricket Club grounds. And why that's important is because we will have representatives from each emergency agency, stakeholders, and also a member of the St. George's Cricket Club on site so we can make decisions which are timely, collaborative, and are risk assessed properly. Attendees are being asked to watch for hygienic food handling practices when purchasing lunch at the field. Water and ice samples have been taken ahead of time and conditions will be monitored throughout the event. For sanitation, we have worked closely with the St. George's Cricket Club and Department of Planning to ensure a sufficient number of bathroom facilities, including disability accessible units. In the event of a non-emergency injury that needs medical attention, St. John's Ambulance volunteers will be on hand. And for more urgent issues... The Lamfogo Urgent Care Center will be open from 4 p.m. to midnight on Cup Match Thursday and Friday for assessment and treatment of urgent but minor illnesses. Those who have an injury or illness that is serious or potentially life-threatening, you should call 911 or go straight to the KMH Emergency Department. BHB will also have their self-contained medical tenting system that will be here located at the cricket grounds, which will house St. John's Ambulance. The BHB is advising everyone to drink plenty of water to stay well hydrated during this hot, humid weather. 
An independent engineer has inspected all scaffolding around the field and given the all clear, according to the Environmental Department. Spectators are asked to move about the viewing landings in a safe and orderly fashion. The gates open at 6.30 a.m. on both Thursday, August 1st and Friday, August 2nd, and they will close between 8 and 8.30 p.m. Jasmine Patterson reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Jasmine. Meantime, with the annual two-day cup match holiday classic just two days away, with most of the island now sporting their colors in honor of the Somerset and St. George's Cricket Clubs, Bermuda Broadcasting News intern Nasir Simmons hit the streets of Hamilton today along with cameraman James Barboza to test the cricket loyalties of the public. What team are you supporting this year? St. George's. And uh, why? Always have supported St. George's. I live down in East End, so I always support St. George's. Somerset, of course. And uh, why? Because it's a family thing, so I stick with tradition. Somerset. And uh, why? Yeah. Oh, if you always, that would mean that the best. St. George's, because that's my name, Gerald St. George Simons. Somerset. And why? Um, live in that area, true to the, true to the uh, community, and uh, love cup match because just everybody has a great time. This is a Somerset answer, right. George. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's Somerset's right. going to win. Somerset's going to win. I just hope the game is going to be uh, still on about 5, 6 o'clock. It will be. Yeah. You we sure? Have a, we have a surprise. Okay. Trust me. I'm waiting for I it. I believe in I'm waiting for it. So some good things are saying this for the last four yeah, years. Um, St. George's, of course. Somerset all the way. Up Somerset. Somerset. Always been for Somerset. I'm just supporting St. George's. And uh, why, if you don't mind saying? Be, because that's my brother's team and that's the one I grew up with. And I always have believed in them, even though my fiance is for Somerset. And I'm like, look, don't make it a, a fight in the house. <laughs> I'm just going to be for St. George's. I don't want to get involved with Somerset and St. George's. I'm keeping the peace, but I, I'm happy to be here every cup match because it's family and friends and it's good, good, good times. <laughs> go Somerset, go St. George's! St. George's all day. And why? Because I know St. George's is going to get the cup this year. Somerset all day, every day. And anyone who's hating on that can go away because you know we're going to win like every year and every day. Yeah, and why? Um, because I like diversity. Blue and blue, it's the same color, just different shades. One faded and then you got a new one. Red and blue, blood and water, sun and moon, opposites attract. Good and evil, that's my love. What's your favorite part of the holiday? Um, just the camaraderie. Everybody comes out and enjoys each other kind. Not have to work. Family get together, family, you know, family. 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 And drinking my dark and stormy. <laughs> Going to the beach. Spending time with family and just relaxing for two days and not working. Um, the days I don't have to work. There's my favorites. I think camaraderie and everyone coming together to enjoy this wonderful occasion. Yeah, I think that's important. Festivities, the revelry, the um, food, family. You know, most times you can take advantage of the holidays to spend time with your loved ones. I like getting into the field and watching the games. And cup match is the epitome of the year. It brings everybody together, represent, even though emancipation is the main thing, but to get out with family and friends, enjoy the match itself. Whether it's win, lose, draw or tie. I just accept it and have a great time. Well said. Turning to weather is sunny with a few showers possible for our Tuesday. Let's go to AccuWeather headquarters for the details. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. The BFNM Insurance Group is pleased to bring you tonight's AccuWeather forecast. I'm AccuWeather meteorologist Brittany Boyer. Hopefully had a great weekend. Fairly dry conditions yesterday. Today, on the other hand, not so much there. You can see on the radar, yeah, we've got a little bit of action right around the island right now. And we are calling for some spotty showers and also the threat for maybe a thunderstorm as we head into tonight. So again, not quite as dry of a day that we made out with on Sunday. You can see a closer inspection of things that are going on right now. We do 
we'll have numerous showers and thunderstorms around the island and just off to our east we have high pressure so we're kind of on the outer periphery of that unfortunately the next 24 or so hours we're going to be looking at the threat of a few showers and again we can't rule out the possibility of a thunderstorm looking at some of the current stats right now over the island temperatures sitting in the low 80s pretty comfortable humidity still up there right now 65 to 70 percent a light wind coming in out of the south five to ten knots but look at the water temperature still very warm if you're here this week on vacation enjoy the bath water 87 degrees is the current water temperature and we have very calm conditions inside the reef waves are calm to one foot so you really can't complain about that outside of the reef a slight chop out there with waves between two and four feet all right looking at some of the weather alerts that we have for tonight we just have one of them out there a thunderstorm advisory this is through tonight and then we'll be looking at more in the way of spotty showers as we get ready to head into Tuesday your tidal times we don't have any marine alerts to tell you about aside from that thunderstorm advisory so we have our high tide coming in at 721 tonight a thunderstorm can't be ruled out otherwise tonight it's going to be a bit on the muggy side partly cloudy with a shower in spots a low of 77 degrees for this evening and then I mentioned we're kind of in that period of 24 hours where we could have some activity here we'll get some peaks of sunshine tomorrow but at times we might have more clouds and sun a high of 86 degrees seasonable temperatures for this time of year but a couple of showers and spots and a low of 79 degrees as we look at what's going on elsewhere in the Caribbean right now you'll notice that we do have numerous showers and thunderstorms we are watching a disorganized cluster of activity right now. Very low probability that it becomes something, but there will be enhanced showers and thunderstorms into areas like Jamaica, Barbados, also Trinidad, Hispaniola. So down there in the Caribbean, there is going to be some action with enhanced moisture impacting some of those places. If you're doing any traveling, maybe you're heading back home or you're going out to the East Coast, you'll notice for Tuesday we are staying dry around New York City, Boston, but Atlanta and Miami looking stormy at times. Your extended forecast, you can see by the time we get into Wednesday, we have some drier air in store temperatures staying in the upper 80s. And at least at this point, the remainder of the week is looking nice and quiet. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. This summer I was in Germany on holiday with my family and on a whim one day my son and I joined a speed sliding competition and as I came down the water slide I went straight down in the pool and whacked my left foot on the bottom of the pool and I looked down and I didn't see a foot. I just saw the bone sticking out and I started to feel faint. I was ambulanced to a hospital where I stayed for 11 days and had surgery. I had snapped all the ligaments on both sides of my ankle. And in the middle of all this stress and pain, we thought, how are we going to deal with health insurance? How will we pay for this? And I got a response from Allison at BFNM and she said, your admission and surgery will be covered at 100%. I didn't have to put it on a credit card and deal with the reimbursement later. It made such a big difference to us. And for me, the BFNM difference is stress-free insurance when I really needed it. Mm -hmm. And you're watching the Monday edition of Bermuda Tonight. Well, two police officers from Bermuda will fly to the UK this weekend to observe the local police planning for the Sussex Gay Pride event. Bermuda Police Service Commissioner Stephen Corbersley says the two local officers, Sean Field Lament and Brian McNabb, will work alongside Sussex Police to take away skills to implement for the island's first gay pride parade at the end of August. The officers will also attend the event to speak with organizers and attendees to see firsthand how the Brighton event is run as well as get feedback on how Sussex police work with their LGBTQ communities. Commissioner Corbishley said, quote, Superintendent Field Lament is the gold commander for Bermuda's pride parade assisted by Sergeant McNabb as his tactical advisor. Mr. Corbishley points out that this is the first such parade in Bermuda and the indication 
information is that there will be an extremely large public turnout in celebration, including overseas attendees, with potentially some small numbers who may also attend to express their objections. Therefore, Mr. Corbishley adds, taking that potential scenario into consideration, he is keen that his two officers receive support by observing best practice in the UK. Royal Bays will have all the latest sports news after the break. Stay tuned. Every home tells a story. Your story is all yours. Big kid, too cool. I make my own rules. Wherever you live, whatever your style, express yourself. Oh, my style says what's up. Don't wanna ever grow up. So many styles to help tell your story and create your unique dream home. We couldn't stand out. Start shopping for furniture at U.S. prices today. Lifestyle Furniture is Bermuda's newest furniture store and is proud to be the home of the number one furniture company in the world, Ashley Furniture. Visit lifestylefurniture.bm or stop by our showrooms today. Lifestyle Furniture, this is home. Unity Fest is slated to be the biggest concert of the summer with headliner Bougie Bantan and it got a whole lot better with the local lineup being announced. So on August 17 at National Sports Center you're going to see Bougie Bantan, Rainy Wonder, Agent Sasko aka Assassin and Massacre are expected to be on stage along with local artist Jesse Seymour, Kadanger, Live Wires, all backed by the Wall Street Band. And there's a whole DJ lineup for the night including the mighty star in love out of Jamaica. There's also local DJs, DJ Chubb, DJ Ibreez, Juggling Jason, Black Star, Blacker Knights, Tony Cross, Ryan Saeed, and Unity Fest is hosted by Java and Young Chow of New York's Hot 97. There are limited tickets left, so make sure you buy them at www.unityfestivalbda.com. But if you want to buy them locally, you can get them at People's Pharmacy, Choices, and Summer Supermart in St. George's. Earl Basin has tonight's sports roundup. Selectors both East and West have spoken as the two cup match teams were selected on Saturday night, the cup match champions. Somerset Cricket Club have made two changes to the team that defeated challenger St. George's Cricket Club a year ago. Former captain Jacund Ednis retired while Trey Mandis is recovering from an accident. Derek Brinkman was recalled while LJ Richardson was named as a Colt. The Somerset Cup match team for 2019 include Jordan De Silva as captain, Taryn Frey vice captain, Stephen Otterbridge, Chris Douglas, Greg Mabry, Malachi Jones, Dion Stovell, Kwesi James, Stephen Brimmer, Derek Brangman, and Al J. Richardson. Cup match challengers St. George's Cricket Club have made several changes to their cup match team for the 2019 edition as they've made five changes to the team that went down last year. St. George's Cricket Club will be led by Lionel Can, who was recalled, with Onias Baskin serving as vice captain. They have recalled OJ Pitcher, Rodney Trott, and Justin Pitcher, with Makai McGowan coming in as a Colt. The St. George's Cricket Club 2019 cup match team is Lionel Can as captain, Onias Bascom vice captain, Treadwell Gibbons Jr., Tamika Wilson, Makai Simmons, Alan Douglas III, Zico Burgess, OJ Pitcher, Justin Pitcher, Rodney Trott, and Makai McGowan. The St. George's Cricket Club have retained the Colts Cup Match Cup at the Wellington Oval with a 62-run victory over Somerset Cricket Club yesterday. Batting first, St. George's Cricket Club were bowled out for 162. Opener Jarrett Richardson was the top scorer with 51. Three Somerset Cricket Club bowlers grabbed three wickets each. Dalen Richardson was most economical, bowling nine overs, three maidens, three for 26. In reply, the Somerset Cricket Club fell short of their target as they were bowled out for 100. Jerez Eve was the top scorer with 20. While Onai Smith led the St. George Cricket Club bowling attack with figures of 11 overs, no maidens, 6 for 33. 
Bermuda won the opening game of their T20 against Bahamas at the National Sports Center yesterday by eight wickets. Bahamas played it first when they were restricted to 136 for eight in their allotted 20 overs. Mark Taylor was their top scorer with 60, while Charles Trott was the pick of the Bermuda bowlers with figures of three overs, three for 16. In reply, Bermuda scored 142 for two after 16.2 overs. Taryn Frey was the top scorer with 56, which came off of 38 balls. He hit five fours and one six. Mark Levy was the pick of the Bahamas bowlers with figures of 2.2 overs, 1 for 31. The opening ceremony of the 2019 Pan American Games took place at the Estadio Nacional Stadium in Lima, Peru. Traditional features such as the Parade of Nations, including Bermuda and the lighting of the Pan Am Cauldron, was held as part of the ceremony. Bermuda were led out by Olympic sailor C.C. Woolman. Erica Hawley finished the Women's Olympic Distance Pan American Games Triathlon in 21st place in some trying conditions in Peru. Hawley, like all the other competitors, faced swell between four to six feet as they entered and exited the water. Hawley was clocked across the line in an overall time of two hours, 14 minutes and 44 seconds. She came out of the water 25th in a time of 21.37. She then clocked the 20th fastest bike time of 1.11.30. Then she had the 20th fastest run time of 41.07. Bermuda's men's and women's bowlers began individual portion of the Pan American Games bowling competition. David Maycock and Damian Matthews both took to the lanes for the men's singles qualifying first block while June Dill and Patrice Tucker competed in the women's singles qualifier first block. At the conclusion of the men's first block, Maycock finds himself 15th with 1,315 pins. Matthews is in 24th with 1,234 pins. In the women's division, Tucker ended the day in 27th place with 1,082 pins while Dill finds herself in 32nd place with 1,005 pins. The Bermuda squash players took on Brazil in team squash action at the Pan American Games in Peru, Bermuda went down 3 to 0. In the first game, Noah Brown went down 3 to 0 to Diego Gobi. Michael Franklin then took on D. Agar, and he went down in straight games 11 6, 11 4, 11 4. Nicholas Kime took to the court for the first time in Peru, and he took on Fernandez going down in three straight games. Bermuda athletes concluded competing in the NACAC Age Under 13 and Under 15 Championships in El Salvador. Elise Dickinson for finishing third in the long jump with a leap of 4.31 meters. Kamari Darrow finished ninth with a leap of 3.96 meters. Dalen Scott finished eighth in the men's long jump with a top leap of 4.41 meters, while Nyan Grant earned 496 points after finishing tenth with a top leap of 4. 0.39 meters. Araya Golden finished 11th competing in the under 15 division during the 60 meter hurdles with a time of 9.94. Catherine Bean Rosario finished 27th, clocking 12.10. During the 800 meter hurdles, Chance Eve finished 21st with a time of 12.91, while Malachi Henry finished 23rd with a time of 13.33. <laughs> Jessica Lewis competed in the 2019 Canadian Track and Field Championships. At the end of the competition, Lewis picked up two gold and two bronze medals in the four events she took to the track for. Lewis won the T53 women's 200-meter gold medal in a time of 33.31. She would win the bronze medal when she finished third in the T53 women's 400 meters in a time of 103.99. During the T53 women's 100-meter final, Lewis would pick up the gold medal in a time of 16.75 and she would close out with the bronze medal during the 800 meters. Mia Christopher and her Premier Navy under-18 girls teammates are the 2019 U.S. Soccer National Champions following their 2-1 victory over the Lady Lobos Rush Premier Team yesterday. Christopher would score the two goals in the semifinals that guided the Premier Navy team to the final, and they would get two goals from Madison Carr as they would lift the title. I'm Earl Baisden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. Micah Franklin has been a professional squash player for the past eight years. The three-time Bermuda National Squash Champion has come through the ranks and captured major titles locally and internationally for Bermuda. In 2018, he won the bronze medal in the men's squash doubles in the CAC Games. On local soil, he won his first Bermuda Squash national title in 2014. 
Four years later, Michael qualified for the double Commonwealth Games and CAC Games in 2018. In 2019, the stakes have been raised. He'll represent Bermuda proudly at the Pan Am Games, seeking to finish in the top eight in the men's individual championships, in the top four in the men's doubles, and top eight in the men's team event. And that's our newscast. I'm Diane Brewer. Thank you for sharing your Monday evening with us, everyone. Good night.